X-Men Origins Wolverine for the Wii. I believe that the other versions for the other consoles are different than this one. Do you smell that? It's mediocrity. Decades before he joined X-Men, Wolverine was just a little kid named Jimmy. Moving on, he and his brother Victor Creed run away from home in their preteen or teenage years. They both fight in the various wars that America has participated in, an aspect that for some reason the game developers chose not to expand on. And then around the 60s or 70s, they were both in a sort of black ops unit, working for Colonel William Stryker. On one mission in Africa, Wolverine finds them killing innocent civilians, and he abandons the unit. He moves to the woods of, I don't know, Northern America, Canada, where he lives with Kayla. However, the past ain't through with him, and one day, his brother, Victor Creed, kills Kayla. Wolverine finds her body and vows to avenge her. When he catches up with Creed, however, he finds that his bone claws are insufficient. He meets Stryker again, and the latter offers him to undergo an experimental procedure, which will infuse all of his bones with adamantium, including his trademark claws. It's no secret that almost every single licensed video game ever made is absolutely lousy, and in this case, the movie itself isn't even very good. Then again, the script for the movie is essentially the script for a video game. So how did this turn out? Decent enough. The obvious problem with licensed video games is that they are very rushed, because the executives who don't know what they're doing want the game to be out at the same time as the movie is, so the people can go watch the movie, then go buy the game. And while both filmmaking and video game development are tough, take talent, and are time-consuming, filmmaking does have the advantage that not everything has to be built from scratch. In a video game, you have to construct, program, and texture every single object, and sometimes from the ground up. About a year isn't necessarily enough to put out a really good game, and certainly not one that also has a pretty decent length, unless it's making the players go back and replay certain parts or something. So these games are almost always rushed, and at times downright incomplete. And that does of course affect this game. It doesn't so much come off as incomplete, except for the fact that there's only like two full CGI sequences, and while those are well on the way to becoming awesome, they're not quite there, but you can tell that it's rushed. There are portions of the game where they throw the most basic stuff at you to prolong the gameplay just a little bit. There's literally a point in this game where a fire comes out of nowhere to block your path, and you then have to defeat all the enemies that come at you, and once you've defeated all of those, the fire will go away just as easily as it appeared. You can also see that it's rushed from the lunge feature. In theory, this is a pretty cool feature. In practice, it's okay. Basically, there are bits in the levels where you can't just run, jump, or activate something. You have to use the lunge feature. Now, once you enter it, you have to do a quick move with the Wiimote when prompted to in the designated direction, which is basically just left, right, or forward. The game decides for itself where it sends you, even though it would have been pretty cool if you had to, in the span of a few seconds, figure out where to jump to. I mean, maneuvering by unusual means in a video game is almost always fun, but every single Prince of Persia game, including 3D, the third game, which was lousy, beats the crap out of this one in that aspect. You do have to move the Wiimote soon after prompted to, but it isn't difficult. It's cool looking enough, but it's almost never challenging. In fact, those are probably my biggest complaints about this game. It's really not terribly challenging, and it gets kind of repetitive. Why is it repetitive, you ask? Well, that brings me nicely into what 
I know is the real draw in any game featuring Wolverine. The deep psychological profile of a man who, I'm kidding, I'm of course referring to the fighting. The fighting gets repetitive because it's what you're going to spend almost all of this game doing. You run from point A to point B. By the way, it's nearly impossible to get lost in this game. Levels are impossibly linear. You fight whoever you run into along the way, and every so often you're asked to do a task. I'm not going to call it solve a puzzle, because they're not puzzles. I mean, they're not the worst I've seen, but they are quite basic. For example, there are some doors that can only be opened by your claws being electrified and there'll always be a panel nearby that you can rip open and it'll shoot out electricity. Go near it, your claws become electrified, go back to the door, voila. Then there are panels and machines you might have to activate, by which I mean of course stab your claw into it and tear it apart. And finally you'll occasionally come across something that Wolverine has to kick. It is a little bit unfortunate that they chose to use one of the attack keys as the interact key. You will sometimes be standing near what you're supposed to be activating and just attacking the air. But that really is a minor thing. Anyway, the fighting. You have two buttons that activate attacks. A fast and not all that powerful one that can be chained and a slower, more hard-hitting one. There are numerous combos and some of them are pretty nice. And since there are only two buttons to activate them, they tend to be pretty straightforward. As expected, you heal automatically in this game. And fortunately, you don't have to be standing still to do so. In fact, as far as I can tell, doing well in combat actually ramps it up quite a bit. So literally, if you're almost dying, your best bet may be to just hurl yourself at them and just hack and slash away at them. There are also points where you have to be avoiding an enemy, usually a boss, while you heal, but this never takes all that long. Blocking is positively useless. The combos are nice enough, but I think it would have been much more useful if you could very swiftly switch back and forth between who you're fighting, like in the new Prince of Persia trilogy. And yes, I realize I can't shut up about those games. Sorry. Because you do at times wind up just attacking more than you need to in a certain direction, while someone else might be shooting at you, trying to stun you. With that said, the combos are quite useful. Enemies get progressively tougher as you go, and a fight can get much shorter if you successively execute a combo on some enemies. When you successfully strike a lot of enemies in quick succession, your rage meter will start to fill. It's relatively easy to fill all the way. It'll happen fairly often. While it isn't being filled, however, it drains gradually. So you can't attack a bunch of enemies, wait one minute, attack some more enemies, and so on and so forth, and you'll eventually have a full rage meter. It has to be earned within a fairly short span of time of you first starting to build it up. Once it's full, do a quick motion forward with both the Wiimote and the Nunchuck, and you'll enter Rage Mode. Wolverine is faster, his attacks do more damage, and it unlocks a couple of new combos. Like I said, the fighting gets to be repetitive, because combos are not... There are only so many ways you can tear apart enemies, and they are all humanoid. I mean, a couple of them are bigger and or have different weaponry. But at the end of the day, that's all you're fighting. And there's only the one way to fight them. Well, other than the feral lunge, which is where you leap at an enemy and execute an attack based on which direction you thrust the Wiimote when you activate the attack. That's not too bad either. However, the game is also so short that you barely have time to get tired of it. This will not take you more than a day and a half to complete. 